All right, let's talk about reaction types and how you use that to figure out what the products of a reaction are be, going to be to complete the chemical reaction where I give you the reactants and you're going to tell me what the products are. First, you've got to know what kind of reaction it is. And to do that, you're going to look at what I give you. If I give you two elements, it's going to be a synthesis reaction. And all you have to do is take those two elements, combine them together, and use the crisscross method to write one formula for one new compound at the end. If I give you one compound, then it's decomposition. And you're going to break that compound down into two simpler substances. A lot of times it is just separating them back down into their elements again. You write down what the two elements are, put a plus sign between them, and then watch out for those diatomic elements. So like if it's chlorine, you have to put Cl2. If it's hydrogen, you have to put H2. Uh, any other element would just be its symbol. There are some special circumstances, some special conditions that I show you in class that I, I'm not entirely sure if you have to know for the quarter exam or the test itself. I haven't seen either one. So at this point on this sheet anyways, all we're going to do is one compound breaking back down into two elements again. If I give you one element and one compound, then that is going to be single replacement. And what you're going to do there is you're going to swap out like for like. So if I give you a metal as the element, you're going to swap it for the metal that's in the compound. You're going to swap places with that metal. If I give you a non-metal as the element, you're going to swap it out for the non-metal in the compound. That's what I mean by swapping out like with like. If I give you two compounds, then that's double. Then you just take the first half of the compounds and swap them. And it doesn't, it, it, you can do it either way. You can take the second half of both compounds and swap them. But the easiest way to do it is just to split the compound in half and swap the first parts and uh, write your new formulas. And every time you're writing formulas on this, it's going to end up being crisscross method because a lot of these, com these combinations here, a lot of these reactions here are ionic. Almost all these reactions here are ionic. So um, you'll use crisscross method to write your formula. Here you'd be writing the formula for one compound as your product, up here, synthesis, one compound as your product. Here you'd have to write what you see, one compound and one element as your product. Again, your compound's going to come from the crisscross. And in this one, you'd be writing two compounds. And again, those two compounds would come from the crisscross method. You'd figure out the subscripts that way. The last type is combustion, and it's going to be a hydrocarbon, C something, H something, plus O2. That's combustion. Those are the easiest of all of them to predict because all you write down is carbon dioxide and water, CO2 and H2O. Let me take a look at a few examples with you to kind of walk you through the process a little bit. We look for the pattern here. We try to see what we've got. C something, H something plus O2. C something, H something plus O2. That's a combustion reaction. And again, in combustion, write down carbon dioxide, water, call it a day, move on to the next. Those are some of the easiest ones to predict. As long as you recognize that the hydrocarbon, the C something, H something, plus oxygen is a combustion reaction. Nothing really to figure out there, nothing really to do there, just write it down. Let's take a look at this one. I have to analyze what I've got. Two capital letters there makes that a compound. Two capital letters there makes that a compound. Two compounds. Two compounds is a double replacement. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split my formula in half and I'm going to swap these positive parts. So the H is coming here to combine with the CL and the CU is coming over here to combine with the S. Now I can't just write that down and say I'm done. I have to look at the subscripts of my formulas to figure out the charge of that copper so I know what to crisscross there. It's a transition metal, so I have to figure out what the charge is over here with the copper chloride, so I know what charge to use when it combines with the sulfur. And then I gotta use the crisscross method over here with the hydrogen and the chlorine. Hydrogen's in group one, it's a plus one. Chlorine's in group 17, it's a minus one. I got a couple of ones to swap out here. So it ends up being just HCl, so that one was okay. Now for this. The, the copper and the sulfur. Over on this side, copper is 
going to have some charge to it. I'm going to figure out what it is because that charge will stay the same when it goes over to the product side. Chlorine, as we already said, is a negative 1. There are two of them for a total charge of negative 2. We always start with our total negative charge. We know our total negative charge and our total positive charge has to be the same. So copper's side of the compound has to be a plus 2. We divide it by the subscript on the copper, and there was nothing there, so we assume it one is 1. The oxidation number for the copper is a plus 2. So this was copper 2 chloride. That 2 had been its Roman numeral in the middle. It's a plus 2 in this compound, which means it's going to be a plus 2 on the product side in the new compound as well. Sulfur, we just look up on the periodic table. It's in group 16. It's a negative 2. We got a couple of 2s here, which, of course, we reduce to 1s. And that ends up being just CUS. So it was good to go also. So HCl plus CUS is the answer. Let's move on to the next one. Again, we're trying to figure out what kind of reaction it is so we know what to do with uh, the elements here, how to rearrange them. Two capital letters, that means that's a compound. Three capital letters, that means that's a compound. So two compounds, compound plus a compound, two compounds is double replacement again. So once again, we're going to split them into positive and negative halves. And we can swap out those positive halves. So the potassium's moving over here with the Cl, and the barium is moving over here with the PO4. Again, we just don't stop there. We have to crisscross. That's the number one mistake students make. They swap elements around just fine, but then they forget they have to crisscross to get the subscripts. So we look at potassium on the periodic table. It's in group one. That makes it a plus one. We look at chlorine on the periodic table. It's in group 17. That makes it a minus one. Again, we have a couple of ones to put in here. And by rule, we don't write down the ones. So it's just KCl. Over here in the second compound, Ba, that's in group two. So it is a plus two. Phosphate's one of our polyatomic ions. Look it up on the chart. It's a negative three. So we have a two going over here, and we have a three going over here. The Ba3, that's simple enough. But remember, before we can put that two on the phosphate, we have to put the phosphate in parentheses to protect it, to make sure its formula doesn't change. So it's Ba3PO42. And again, we write that down as our products. And we're done. We predicted it. Let's look at the next one. In the next one, we have C something H something plus O2. CH something plus O2, that's combustion again. And whenever it's combustion, Write down your carbon dioxide and your water, call it a day, and move on to the next. Some of the easiest ones you can do. Again, it's C something, H something, plus O2. That's how you know it's a combustion reaction. Let's look at the next one. Potassium and chlorine, two elements. Whenever I give you two elements, it's a synthesis reaction. And all you're going to do is the crisscross method to figure out what the formula is, just like we did up here. Potassium's in group one, so it's a plus one. Chlorine's a group 17, so it's a minus 1. We have a couple of 1's to swap out. 1 there, 1 there. Don't write down the 1's. It's just KCl. And that's it. You're done. It's a synthesis reaction. There's only supposed to be one product. Let's do one more. Well, let's do two more. Let's just jump down here to these two so that you know what you're supposed to be doing with those. I only have one reactant here. One reactant is the key giveaway of a decomposition reaction. And again, up here, if you only have one compound given to you, it's a decomposition reaction. And in most of these, all we're going to do is just split this up into its two elements. So it splits right down the middle. Sodium is the first element. It's just Na. Chlorine is the second element. It's one of those diatomics. And because it's diatomic, you have to put the two on it. The diatomics are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, 
and iodine. If they are by themselves in a chemical reaction, you automatically put the two on it. If they're in a compound like they were up here, we gotta do the crisscross method to figure out what to put on it. But when they're by themselves as an element, you gotta put a two on it. Then again, I wanna do this one as well so that you're familiar with what to do with this type of reaction. Two capital letters makes that a compound. One capital letter makes that an element. One compound, one element, single replacement reaction. So like replaces like. This is zinc. Zinc is a positive ion, it's a metal. So it has to, comp it has to replace the positive part of that compound. Like replaces like. So we're gonna swap out the zinc and the hydrogen. So it's gonna be zinc and chlorine as our new compound and hydrogen is going to be by itself. So to figure out the zinc thing, zinc is one of the rare predictable transition metals. It always has an oxidation number of plus two. Chlorine's a minus one. Two goes there. One goes there. ZnCl2 is going to be the chemical formula. So you write that. Hydrogen is going to be by itself, but hydrogen is one of the diatomics. So you have to put the subscript 2 on it. 